Good evening, I'm Abby Phillip in New York, and tonight, a question of paramount importance to your vote lands at the feet of nine justices. Donald Trump wants the United States Supreme Court to answer two questions, once and for all. One, did he engage in an insurrection? And two, is he ineligible to run for president of the United States? Trump's lawyers say that the answer to question one is clear and unequivocal, no. Their filing submitted today asserts that what the wor world witnessed on January 6th was, quote, not insurrection, and President Trump in no way engaged in insurrection. His lawyers write, in the context of the history of violent American political protests, January 6th was not an insurrection. Now, read through the document, and it almost sounds like the lawyers lawyered by basically lifting from their own client. They were there with love in their heart. That was an unbelievable, and it was a beautiful day. And what I was asked to do, I wasn't involved in it very much. I was asked to come in, would I make a speech? I made a speech. I said, walk peacefully and patriotically, or, you know, many different things. Just like his perfect call for which he was impeached, Trump's legal counsel thought it wise to send a transcript of his one-hour speech to the justices. To question two now, is Donald Trump constitutionally even allowed to run? Well, his lawyers answer, without a doubt, the answer is yes. They assert that the president is not an officer of the United States. Now, is that logic or is it logic bending? The Supreme Court now gets to answer that question, and there is a huge need for speed here. Colorado votes on March 5th. In just moments, Chris Wallace will join me on the political impact of all of this. But first, joining me now for her first interview since Trump filed his appeal to the Supreme Court is Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold. Uh, thank you very much for staying up for us tonight, Secretary of State Griswold. Uh, can you first walk us through what this means for the state of Colorado? If we don't get a ruling by January 5th in just a couple of days, does that mean Trump remains on the ballot in Colorado basically no matter what? Well, first off, thank you for having me. And don't you worry, it's not too late in Colorado. So still plenty of time to talk about this uh, crucial case. The Colorado Supreme Court ruled that Trump engaged in insurrection, and because of that, he was disqualified from the ballot. But they put a caveat into their ruling, saying that if the case was appealed to the United States Supreme Court, Trump would be on the ballot until the Supreme Court acted in some way. So as of today, he is on the ballot. Uh, I certify the ballot. So basically tell the counties who, which candidates will be on so that they can print the ballots. But our elections get going pretty quickly. Overseas and military ballots actually go out this month. We have early voting, vote by mail in Colorado. So Coloradans will be voting pretty soon. And if the Supreme Court rules in favor uh, of uh, the Colorado Supreme Court, to remove Trump from the ballot, but his name is still there. What happens then? Colorado's elections take into account candidates who either drop out of a race when their name is already on the ballot or other on, are otherwise unable to be voted on. So in that situation, uh, if voters cast a ballot or a vote for someone who is disqualified, we would not be able to count those votes. I think it um, underlines that how, how unprecedented this situation is. Usually when we have disqualifications arise, it's not with the president. It's not with candidates running for president because usually candidates running for president don't engage in insurrection and don't have this crucial constitutional question facing their candidacy. Here's what Trump's lawyers are arguing in their filing about whether the 14th Amendment even applies to the former president. They write, to find that Section 3 includes the presidency, one must conclude that the drafters decided to bury the most visible and prominent national office in a catch-all term that includes low-ranking military officers while choosing to explicitly reference presidential electors. I mean, to a lot of people, including many legal experts, this doesn't make sense, just common sense. What do you think? Does it hold any merit? I agree that it doesn't make sense. 
it does not make sense to allow a president to engage in insurrection and get off scot-free. Uh, a president, the person who has arguably the most power in this country, uh, should not be able to do that type of action and run again when every other elected official would be barred from doing so. Donald Trump is basically arguing to the United States Supreme Court that he did not engage in insurrection, but even if he did, it's okay, he can still be president again. I disagree with that. Two Colorado courts have already found that he did engage in insurrection. I think it's very clear from the actions around January 6th before and after his role uh, in that violent insurrection. Uh, but regardless of my sentiments, this is a big case in front of the United States Supreme Court. And I, I do believe that the United States Supreme Court uh, is, should tell the American people whether a president can engage in insurrection and then again run for that office. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask you about one of the arguments being made by Trump's lawyers. Uh, they're basically saying that this would deprive the American people from choosing to vote for or against a candidate of their choosing uh, at a national level for the presidency of the United States. What do you make of that? And do you think that that will factor into the Supreme Court as they weigh this question? Do you think that there's a risk here of disenfranchising voters? I think the biggest risk of disenfranchising voters happened on January 6th, when Donald Trump tried to steal the presidency from the American people. Make no mistake, that is exactly what he intended to do. Uh, we are a country of laws and of constitutions. There are qualifications for office. Uh, so for example, if a lot of voters wanted to vote for Arnold Schwarzenegger, they wouldn't be able to do so because he is disqualified from running for president under the United States Constitution. Uh, I, I think this case is very similar. If the Supreme Court finds him, uh, unqualified or otherwise uh, affirms the Colorado Supreme Court or declines to review the case, we would consider him not qualified, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or someone who was too young, uh, to be on the ballot. Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, thank you again for joining us tonight with all of that. Thank you so much. And joining me now to discuss this is Chris Wallace, CNN anchor and host of Who's Talking to Chris Wallace and The Chris Wallace Show. Chris, thanks for joining us again. Good to be with you, Abby. So, Chris, I wanted to get your reaction first to this breaking news that the Trump uh, campaign is appealing Colorado's decision to kick him off of the ballot. Do you think that the Supreme Court uh, will ultimately take on this challenge from the former president? Oh, they, they have to. I mean, you can't have a situation where one state Supreme Court is taking a presidential candidate off the ballot, uh, another state secretary of state is doing it, a bunch of states are saying, no, he stays on the ballot. Uh, you know, they may not, the, the court may end up deciding this on very technical grounds, but, but they've got to be able to decide whether or not uh, Donald Trump, who at this point is the front runner for the Republican nomination, should be on the ballot. Uh, in all 50 states. I just can't imagine a checkerboard where he's on the ballot in some states and not in others. Yeah, yeah and, and certainly time is of the essence here. I mean, this is not the kind of thing that they could wait six months for, given that the primary is underway. And, and speaking of, we're in this final countdown now to Iowa. And Trump is, as you said, the clear front runner. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis are battling it out for second place. They are now turning from attacking each other to saying that they are the ones who are going to take on the former president. Listen. In his commercials and in his temper tantrums, <laughs> every single thing that he said has been a lie. Every single one. I looked for so great a truth. Every single one. I don't think Donald Trump ultimately can win an election. There are just going to be so many voters that are activated to come out and vote against him that it's not even related to policy. It's related to other things. So do you think that that argument ultimately is going to convince Iowa voters? And what do you make of the fact that suddenly now they think it's important for them to make it clear that they are willing to take on Trump? Well, it's awfully late in the game. I mean, how many months has this campaign been going on? And, you know, you hear a little thing on, from DeSantis about, well, he can't win or Trump didn't 
uh, keep all his promises as president and from Nikki Haley about chaos. But, I mean, let's put this in perspective. No Republican has ever won a contested race in the Iowa caucuses by more than 12 points. Right now, Donald Trump leads both Haley and DeSantis by more than 30 points. So it seems awfully late for them to come to this recognition. 